What's going on guys? In this video, I want to talk to you about big picture study strategies for the MCAT. So you don't need me to tell you that the MCAT is one of the most important factors in determining your success in gaining acceptance to medical school. I'm going to share with you the same strategies that got me a top score. Here's my score report. It says 100th percentile, but that's because they rounded up. I think it's supposed to actually be 99.9th percentile. This score I got, which is 40, is equivalent to approximately 523 and above on the new MCAT based on the online conversions and percentiles that are available. Now, this score is for the old MCAT before they revised it, but these strategies will absolutely translate into the new MCAT just as effectively. So in this video, I'm going to be trying a new format. We're going to be using animations to spice things up a little bit. I would love to hear what you guys think. Leave a comment below. So first, when should you take the test? One of the most important factors for your success is going to be timing, both of study time and your test date. So your study time should immediately precede your test date. There's no point studying in the summer and then taking the test in winter break. So first, for timing. Don't wait too long after you finish your core courses and prerequisites to study for the MCAT. Prolonging that gap will result in you forgetting key information. While you can relearn this information, it's just wasted energy. The name of the game is efficiency. Now for me, I studied between sophomore and junior year during the summer. This was best for me, but see what works best for you and your schedule. Now as for duration, I recommend you set aside between two and two and a half months of dedicated study time. I personally spent two and a half months. During the first month, I was doing a prep course while also working 10 to 20 hours per week in a research lab. During the second month, I wrapped up the prep course and I focused all my energy on studying. I was no longer doing research or any classes in that last month leading up to the test. Next, study smarter, not harder. I go over the details on how to spend your study time efficiently and not to burn out in some other videos. I'll place the links down in the description below. So make sure you pace yourself. Studying for the MCAT is a marathon, not a sprint. Part of the reason I decided to do 10-20 hours of research per week in my first month was to ease into the intensity of studying. This helped break the monotony while maintaining productivity in my other endeavors. Now the number of hours I studied per week slowly increased as it got closer to the test. Your stamina and ability to focus will improve with time if you pace yourself properly. If you jump in at 100% intensity from the get-go, you're more likely to have it backfire and lead to a quick burnout. But at the same time, be careful and don't use this as an excuse to only study for a couple hours a day. You want to be putting in the work, but also maintaining both your physical and mental health. Next, set up a optimal environment. First, do you like to study solo or in groups? As I mentioned in some other videos, I don't think that larger groups than three, with yourself included, are a good use of time. After three people, you begin to receive diminishing returns on your study efforts. I studied with two roommates who did the same prep course as me, and they also set high goals. Um, using similar st study strategies, they both did well, scoring in the 90 to 95th percentile range. Since we were all studying together for the same test around the same date, we were in the same boat. We kept each other's motivation up, we helped each other focus, and since we were all inherently competitive to a certain degree, we wanted to do better than one another and improve on ourselves, of course in a healthy way, definitely not sabotaging each other but instead learning from each other and sharing tips and trying to improve each other as well as ourselves. Now, I'm not saying that studying alone is impossible, but seriously consider the benefits of having study partners. I was lucky to have roommates in the same situation. I recommend you find friends or classmates who are studying at the same time if you can. College is full of distractions and most of us could use the added focus and motivation. Next, what is your study space like? If you live in a frat that has multiple parties every Thursday through Sunday, living there may not be the best spot for you when you're studying for your MCAT. I lived in my university apartment for the first month, and I went back home for the last couple of weeks. The reason I did this is that staying at home minimized any college-based distractions and allowed me to focus fully on studying, and additionally, my food and my groceries were taken care of. 
I know that your living situation might be different and you may decide on doing another route. That's totally fine. Just carefully consider your options to set yourself up for success. Surrounding yourself with temptation and hoping that you stay motivated and disciplined is foolish. Set yourself up for success from the very beginning. Minimize that possibility of failing. Now choose your study resources carefully. First, you need to ask yourself, what is the goal in studying for the MCAT? Are you going for the 99th percentile or are you okay with the 80th percentile? Be honest with yourself. If you are shooting for a top score, you need to understand that you'll be putting in much more time and effort. Prepare yourself for this, but it will pay off. Your goals will dictate your study approach and the resources you should use. Now, if you're aiming for a top score, you should over-prepare. I'm not saying waste your time studying things that aren't relevant. Instead, aim to master every concept that is high yield. This strategy will take you a longer time, and your increase in your score will be slower, but your top potential score will ultimately be higher. If you're aiming a little bit lower, and there's nothing wrong with that, then you may be best served by resources that teach you how to take the test. Some test prep companies teach you how to navigate the test with certain test-taking strategies without having to necessarily master all of the material. This is more likely to increase your score quicker, but you're going to plateau sooner and reach a ceiling with how high of a score you can achieve. Next, recreate the test conditions. This goes hand in hand with the last point. Practice tests are your most prized resource. Use them carefully. Don't waste them all at the beginning, but at the same time, do take them early enough to familiarize yourself with the test. When you do a practice test, recreate the test conditions. Take breaks as if it were the real thing. Turn your phone off. Use earplugs if you plan on using earplugs day of the test. Time yourself accurately, both test blocks and test breaks. I recommend taking your first test after one or two weeks of studying. As the test day gets closer, use them more frequently. In the two to three weeks leading up to the test, I was doing between three and four practice tests per week, averaging about one every other day. But, and I say this is a huge but, the new MCAT is three hours longer than the MCAT that I took. I don't think it's feasible to maintain this with the new test. That being said, you should still consider doing practice tests at a higher frequency the closer it gets to your test. Last, optimize your test day conditions. In another video, I'll go more into detail on how to prepare the day before and the day of your big test. In short, only study half the day before your test. You want to be relaxed and comfortable. Cramming last minute is more likely to hurt you than help you. Drive to the testing center, get familiar, and day of, make sure you have a good breakfast and you get in the zone. You've done your hard work, time to show them what you got. That's it for this video, guys. What do you all think of the new format? I'd love to hear what you think below. Any questions or suggestions for new content, also please leave those in the comments below. And don't forget to press like and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. See you guys in that next video.